did you see what he just did there? Oh my <laughs> God. Usually we do the prepare phase first. I'm like, oh, no gears. Okay, just observe. Oh, gear change by itself. <laughs> yeah, that must make the first lesson so much easier. Welcome to the future, Francis. Fantastic, really good. And I'm gonna hear whether I've passed or failed my driving test. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> the examiner today and this is what's up guys I'm Francis it's Francis <laughs> right so this is Francis driving test center Morden yep all right Francis is gonna have a driving test today I am I know Morden really well so if I fail this driving test this is gonna be super embarrassing okay well we'll see about that and if I we? fail <laughs> you're gonna edit it out <laughs> no Right, okay, so we've got everything set up. We've got the sat nav. Um, sat nav's gonna run a little bit longer than a regular test, so yep. we're gonna have it to go a little bit further than normal because I'm actually not too familiar with Morden, although I have been here a couple of times, yep. okay? This is a long, long, long time ago. How you doing? Test center's just across the road from where we are. Yep. All right, you ready to go? Yeah, so at Morden, you don't start in the test center car park. You just park your car anywhere around the area and take the examiner to wherever your car's parked. Okay, that's really good information. So yeah. that's something I didn't know. So if there's any other little bits and pieces, although you are kind of under test <laughs> conditions, um, yeah, shout them out. Yeah, right. so I'm actually just, getting yeah. nervous. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's my authority. It's the, it's the, yellow, it's the yellow jacket. As soon as the yellow jacket goes on, yeah. whoa, nerves yeah. go up. And that's actually something that happens to a lot of people, isn't it, it is, when yeah. they're doing a driving test, so. Yeah. Okay, all right, should we crack on then? Yeah, let's do it. I'm yeah. gonna adjust my mirrors. This isn't the normal car that I drive, it's an automatic. Oh yeah. So I'm not used to driving automatics, I'm used to driving a manual car. All so right. this should be interesting. Okay, there's a few things that I actually need to kind of fill in here. So just go for it, while I out. adjust the mirrors? Yeah, you're yeah. going for it. So that's one of the things I was going to go through, just to help you out and teach you or give you some advice on how to adjust that, but obviously not necessary, you know exactly what you're doing. Um, the next part is obviously to start the car, but you probably know exactly how to do that as well. Just hold the brake on, push the start button, very similar to your car, but it'd be the clutch instead, wouldn't okay, it? Okay, yeah. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, the last piece of information you'll need is that the, the changing from drive to reverse, for example, yeah. is not here in the centre, which it usually oh, is okay. in most automatics. It's on your right stick. Yeah, yep. oh, so can it. you see all the letters there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the last one is P for park, which is actually a button on the edge of the stick. So here, right. this is just washing the windows, but on your side, it put you in P. Everything's displayed here on the dash. Got it. Okay. So if I want to go into neutral. Yep, just a light tap. Reverse. Right, Perfect. got it. And we've got a parking yeah. camera. You get your lovely little camera there. Okay. Nice. Okay. Um, so, Francis. We're going to be driving for about 45 minutes. We will be doing a reverse manoeuvre. We may be doing a controlled stop. No! I don't like controlled stop, sorry. Because it <laughs> uh, mashes up his house. <laughs> it just mashes me up, basically. Um, and Wait, then mash. we'll be doing about 20 minutes of independent drive, although it'll be a lot longer than that because yeah. I, I don't know more than that. Well, okay. okay, so when you're ready and it's safe, drive on. <sighs> this car's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, cool. Yeah. Okay, so we're in reverse. We're in reverse. Let's do, oh, does the handbrake go off automatically? Yes, Okay. yeah, cool. all automatic handbrake. Uh, so the driving test route is uh, the other way. So I'm gonna just quickly do a three point turn. This is not on the driving test anymore. So hopefully you know how to do a three point turn. If you don't, because you will need it in general life driving, Yeah. you should be practicing helpful. it. Mm -hmm. All right, there's my three-point turn done. Back into drive, and let's go. I'm just going to follow the directions on the sat nav here. Ooh, gear change by itself. <laughs> Welcome to the future, Francis. Yeah, well, I don't know, mate. I don't know, automatic to the future? I guess because electric cars are going to be the only thing being sold past 2020-something. Mm -hmm. 2035? Sounds about right. Yeah. So, I mean, electric cars are all automatic, so yes. maybe it is the future. I'm still not giving up on my manual quite yet, though. I've got an oncoming car. I am there turning. Thanks for signaling, mate. Yes. Don't rely on signals, huh? Look at the wheels. After 100 yards, turn left. Then, at the end of the road, turn right. All right, great. So I'm going to do mirrors, signal, slow turn down left, in advance. Then, at the end of the road, turn right. 
oncoming car because I'm on a driving test. I'm going to be nice. I'm not going to try and bully my turn way through. Right, I'm not in a hurry. Then turn left. Literally taking the examiner Scott on a big circle. So we're not in a hurry at all. Let's look for any gaps. This car in front is doing something weird, hanging out into the road. Yeah, not necessary here. The visibility is really good. Gap on the right. Is there a gap on the left? Yes, I'm going to take that because they wave me through. Yeah, nice. Well done. That's a lot of thing that learner drivers or people learning to drive wouldn't necessarily do. They don't have the confidence After 200 yards, to take that. Yeah. Turn left. Okay, so we're going to turn left in 200 yards. I can spot the junction thinking about when I'm going to signal. Now would be a good time. Slowing down turn way left. in advance of the corner. It's a pretty good cornering speed. I'm not going too fast, not rushing. Because I don't want to make a mistake and look silly. Letting this car through first. Good. Nice allowing enough space for the vehicle and enough space for you. That's another thing I've noticed when people learning to drive. They tend to tuck themselves into corners. Yeah, really yeah. Close to parked cars. Makes you look like you're parked. Your car might go around you from behind. Yeah. Cheers. I'm saying thanks to everyone. I noticed that. But you don't have to do that on your driving test. The examiner no. will probably do it for you. Yeah. Checking my mirrors before Very I Very nice. Well done. Taking it nice and slow. Look how close it was to that parked car there. Don't want to rush that and set off too fast. Oh, yeah. Very lowered. Yeah. Let's go nice and easy over the next bump. Might even apply a little bit of brakes there. Oh, that was comfortable. All right, Francis, um, if it's safe, I'd like you to pull over on the left. Do not worry about driveways on this occasion. Allow about a car length from the next park vehicle, please, and move okay. forwards until there's a roughly a car length from the vehicle. All right, fantastic. Uh, this is what's called an angled start, which will not be mentioned to anybody on the driving test, but okay. it's part of the driving test, as you know, obviously. Yep. Okay, take your time when you're ready and it's safe. Drive on. All right, cheers. All right, now I noticed, I may be wrong about this. Go on. Very good observations over to your most dangerous side. Yeah. Blind spots on the right, yeah? Yeah. Now I had a part two, part three standards check um, seminar recently. Okay. And what I've been told, you might be able to fill in the blanks on this, it's not necessary all the time to check over to the left blind spot yeah what six do point you check. know about that is so the six point check is very yeah. commonly taught to all learners yeah right at the beginning because it makes you more aware of what's to 200 around you. yards bear left then turn right but in reality the examiner is looking for you to check your roadside blind spot mm -hmm. yeah and the mirrors yeah so in that occasion where you pulled up on the left there's not really so much danger from the left is there? there's no side roads yeah there's no side roads yeah very low on pedestrians. There left, then turn right. You'd probably be wasting time checking that left blind spot, right? Okay. Yep. Okay. Here's a tricky corner. Make sure that you see that 30 sign and the fact that there's a give way line in front. If you approach this too fast, you're going to give your examiner nerves. So take it nice and slow. Make sure you're checking early and in advance so the examiner knows you've got that covered. And here, coming up next, is what I would consider Morden's worst or hardest crossroads. So if you're not good at crossroads and you're doing your driving test in Morden, traffic light control crossroads that is, come and practice those a lot with your driving instructor, friends, After family, whoever's yards, teaching us to drive. Turn right. Okay, 200 yards, turn right, and this is it. This is where it's coming up. Getting a bit squeezed there, so I was slowing down, not getting too close to the Ford KA in front. Speeding up nice and gently. I don't want to give the examiner the impression I'm a boy racer. So I'm taking it nice and easy. Spot the speed limit sign up ahead. Turn right. Okay, so <laughs> in this situation and in that instance, that's probably the easiest I've ever seen that crossroads, but it does get a lot harder than that. So just while we've got a mile to go, what is it that you consider to be so difficult about that crossroads? It's the crossing behind and in front. Ah, uh, okay. Knowing when to cross behind, knowing when to cross in front and having the confidence to be able to cross behind when there's oncoming traffic coming mm -hmm. at you. Yeah. So near side to near side, off side to off side. Yeah, that's yeah. it. All right, so what, this is a question that I get a lot. 
What's the most common way, near side, near side, offside, offside? Offside to offside is preferable because yes. then you've got, you've got the best view of mm -hmm. what's coming, so you know when to go, when to not go. Mm -hmm. Near side to near side, that junction's massive, so doing near side is going to be probably After silly and getting marked down. Turn okay. left. Um, but offside is always better. If you can't because there's a massive lorry or the junction's too small, obviously near side is the, the way to go. Nice. But neither are incorrect, right? No, neither is incorrect. Yeah, I usually tell my students that take the position from a vehicle that's already in the junction. Yeah. Obviously, if there's no one there, you make your position. Yeah. And usually I would instruct people to keep to the centre of the road until they're in line with the centre of the new road and wait there. But it After depends on road markings. Yards, yeah, it depends on other vehicles that might be inside the junction. The that's the thing about crossroads. You can teach one way, but the junction might be different every single time you go back there. So you just need to know the basic rules and apply it. Be confident. So slowing down in advance here. So we've got another big crossroads here, but we're turning left, so not too tricky this time. Not tricky at all to turn left. Sometimes turn these left, crossroads then take the third left. We'll have filter lights on them, won't they? Yeah. People miss those. People miss the filter lights, yeah. Mm. So they'll see a big red circle normal light, and then there's a green smaller arrow yeah. at the bottom. Best thing to do there is if you can see that your traffic light's got four lights on it, not just amber, red, and green, you know that one of them's gonna be a filter light if you've got more than three traffic lights there. Yeah, because if you don't go when it's a green arrow, the filter light, you're gonna get beeped, which might actually help you out, give you a um, kind of wake up call to go. But if you don't, and you don't go, you don't pass your driving test. <laughs> yeah, that's the drawback. <laughs> So we've got the filter lights here, actually. Yeah, there we've got we go. two filter lights. So there was a red traffic light as well for anybody that's um, eagle-eyed. Uh, who was the red traffic light for? Yeah, there's your question. So we had two green arrows, which were the filter lights. Which way were they pointing? After 100 yards, turn left. So who was the red light for? Not nice. us. Yeah, not turn us, left. we were going left. Good, somebody else doing their practice here. Very nice, smooth. I like smooth what you said yeah. earlier about the approaching speed, braking Approach speed early. Is so important. Yeah, obviously, in a manual car, um, you would At have the to the road, choose the appropriate right. gear yeah. before you get to the corner and then lift your clutch up so we're not coasting. Good, so that'll be me on the next video. <laughs> right, so we're going to turn right. Turn here. right. Because it's a giveaway line, my approach speed's even lower. I usually recommend sort of from a running to jogging to walking speed, possibly stopping. Yeah. I'd like you to pull over and stop in a safe place on the left, please. Roger. That's where you go, no, my name's Scott. <laughs> my name's Mr. Examiner to you. Oh, yeah, sorry. Right, okay, Francis. Um, is that the handbrake? It is, if you want to use it. You um, it. Yes. Is it on? Good. Oh. You see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you don't need to push it again. When you're ready to go, you just accelerate. And it disengages by itself. Correct. Snazzy. Very good for hill starts. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, when you're ready and it's safe, drive on. Okay. So usually we do the prepare phase first. I'm like, oh, no gears. Okay. Just observe. Signal. It's the future, Francis. And <laughs> move. <laughs> I will convert him by the end of this mock test. Yeah, that must make the first lesson so much easier. Mate, because all you do is observe and gas. Okay, super common mistake here. This is one of the points, the tricky bits in Morden, where you could potentially fail your driving test. Go Imagine that giveaway line right ahead right. in the rain. It's really difficult to see white painted lines in the rain. And the sat nav's just told you to go straight on. What does that then cue you to do? Just drive straight on without considering road markings. So if you don't stop there, and I've had this before on a driving test and it was raining, right. she couldn't then see cross the, roundabout the road markings. And take the second exit. And the examiner had to break and then she failed a driving test. So make sure that if you're here, come and practice it and you forget. Mm -hmm. Come and practice it and consider the road markings. Also, it looks like um, I thought it was going to happen to us now, but we'll have crossroads where there won't be a sat nav on and the examiner won't give you any direction. But at the beginning of the test, yards, what do they tell you? Cross the roundabout. So at the beginning the of the test, exit. I'd like you to then just go straight ahead, follow the road ahead yeah. at all times unless road markings are signed to state otherwise. That's it, yeah. If I need you to turn left or right, I will tell you in good time. 
So when they're quiet, they want to see that you've noticed the giveaway lines. Yeah. You're slowing down early, like Francis has said many times, which is so important. And stopping, looking, seeing if it's safe, and then following the road ahead. Oh, this car's so smooth. Cross the Can roundabout and take the got? second exit. Then turn left. You're not getting these keys no. back, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, because there aren't any keys. <laughs> Keyless start as well. Oh, yeah. but... Okay, so I was considering that roundabout, there was nothing on the right. After 200 Go over and stop on the yellow left, line for me. Don't worry about driveways left. on this occasion, please. Okay. Lovely, thank you very much. Now, uh, what I've noticed recently is examiners seem to be asking students to do parallel parking, what's now called reverse parking, on semi-busy roads. Yeah. Now, you're at a level where you're quite advanced, obviously, so I'm not too worried about asking you to do a reverse park on this road. Okay. I wouldn't normally ask a regular student to do a reverse park on a road like this. Yeah. Some of the roads that I've seen people doing on their test recently, I've been like, oh, maybe I should start asking them to do reverse parking on roads like this. Okay. So today, Francis... <laughs> What's he going to tell me to do next? <laughs> Today's that day, Francis. All right. right. I would like you to, when it's safe, yeah. okay, because this might take a little while, we can speed this up in the edit, to move out and stop parallel to the vehicle in front. Okay. All right. It's cool. going to make for good good viewing. This okay? is where I mess it up and I look silly. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm really putting them in the deep end now. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'd like to move out, stop parallel to the vehicle in front and then reverse park within two car lengths and a reasonable distance from the kerb. Brilliant, let's do it. So, we're gonna stop about half a meter away from the car. Lovely. After Just signaling yards, left, turn left in case there's any then cars behind. take the second left. Good, and your positioning's brilliant because it's actually allowing the oncoming traffic space to pass us. Yeah, because I don't want an audience. Really good, <laughs> yeah, lovely. That's so if there's any oncoming like vehicles, I'm gonna hold because they're passing me really closely. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's nothing behind. So once this big black car has gone, I'm going to just set off nice and gently, keeping up really good observation. One turn left. Oh, might be different reference points in this car. you got the camera to help you. Oh, I'm not used to parking cameras. So there's a car behind me. I'm just going to stop so that they can pass me safely. There's a car in front as well. They're just going to wait for them to go. Fiat 500. It's a great little car. It's it is, yeah, yeah, it's a cool car. It's so light and small, it's really fast, nippy. Michael Schumacher had one. Did he? Yeah. No way. Maybe he had the R buff. Did you have the R buff version? Yeah. yeah, yeah, those R buffs sound so good. Sound good. Don't know how they drive though, never driven one. Okay, I've seen one last... on its roof before. On its roof? <laughs> yeah. So... Was that Schumi's? <laughs> no, it was a well known driving school, a large driving school when they used to use those. Yeah, Begin we'll, with B? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's my parallel park. All right, lovely. And I'm happy with that. Yeah, would so you put the car into drive and handbrake on after that? Yeah, I you would can tell do people that. handbrake neutral in yeah, the manual. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, handbrake cool. neutral. Um, I'll show you another little trick regarding the um, parking, if you like. Okay. There's another little technique. It's a little bit tricky. So when I see a sort of advantage a bit later, um, instead of pushing the P, yeah. I'll ask you to do something different with the brake. Right, we'll see okay. if that comes on, just to show you that you might prefer it. Okay. I, I, I think you will prefer it, okay? Is it the automatic parking? Does it, do it drive itself? It, yeah, we could do that, but uh, <laughs> we might we might, be, might do that off camera a bit later. Um, no, what it is is exactly the same as what you've done yeah. by pushing the button. Okay. But you can actually do it with the brake. Uh, can you? Okay. Yeah. Um, right? Maybe I'll just show you now. All right, so yeah, just brake as normal. Yeah. Yeah, now Wait. give it a squeeze. There, take your foot off the brake. Can you see it says hold? Yeah. So it's exactly like what you did before with ah, the P, okay. which some people prefer. It holds the brake for you. Yeah. So it's a slight technique. You just kind of brake as normal yeah. and then give it a press or squeeze and then you'll see the hold come up. So you can do that every single time you stop. This car's incredible. It's, it's quite comfortable, yeah. Yeah. So when you stop at a light, do that, chill yeah. out, relax. No need to have the foot down on the clutch, foot on the brake, yeah. and, ooh, you know, and just now you're completely Excellent. relaxed, yeah? Okay. I need to change my car soon, actually. Should I pull away, yeah? Yes, when you're ready and it's safe, drive on. I need to change my car soon, and I'm seriously considering getting one of these. Is he marking yeah. something? I'm just marking that we've completed the reverse park. 
If he's marking something, yeah, you've completed the reverse mark. Okay, good. <laughs> so that's something to mention to students, huh? Because they might see the examiner kind of do something on their tablet. Yeah, it's true. Then think take they've the actually left. made a mistake. When you haven't, you've just completed part of the test. So stop sign there. There was nothing coming, but you must come to a full and complete stop anyway. Excellent. Yeah, it's mandatory, isn't it? Yeah. You got a big solid stop line as well, not broken giveaway lines. Absolutely. Right. After 100 yards, turn left. And peeping up with the picture on the sat nav as well, not just listening to the voice guidance. Sometimes turn the left. voice guidance is misleading. Like we heard her say earlier, carry on or go straight on. What does that mean? If you were with a driving examiner or instructor, they wouldn't say something like that. So I'm always looking at the picture as well. I'd like to pull over and stop on the left, please. Again, don't worry about the driveways on this occasion or the yellow line. All right, I'm going to try your foot pedal. Yeah, technique. go for it. So just at a regular, the end of the road, turn right, then right. take the second and then left. Press. Push. There you go. Hold. And we're on a hill and we're not rolling. Very nice. Take your time when you're ready. Cool. Drive on. All right, Francis, I'd like you to tell me What's yep. the road legal tyre requirements, please? Okay, so we'd need 1.6 millimetres across the central three quarters of the tyre around the entire circumference, and also we're looking for no Turn cuts right, or bulges take the second in left. the side wall of the tyre. Very important. People leave that part out, don't they? No the cuts, cuts and bulges, no bit. bulges yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a legal requirement, you must know. And it's three points on your licence for each tyre that's not road legal. So you could have potentially four not road legal tyres and whack up 12 points. I've had that before actually, yeah. I've had been stopped by the police and one of my tyres was below the, the required After limit. After 200 yards, before I was a driving left, instructor, of course. Then cross yeah, the I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that either. And I got three points in my licence, so it does happen. Yeah. Make sure that you're checking left, your tyres. Then cross the roundabout it's not just, and take the second exit. It's not just the police being boring, it keeps you safe. The tyres are your only contact patch with the road, the only thing keeping you on the road. So keeping your tyres up to scratch is really important. It is, yeah. Misleadingly, what do you reckon the speed limit is on After this road? 100 yards, cross the there's roundabout no signs, and take there's the second There's no exit. speed bumps, so I would say it's 30 cross miles an hour. Cross the roundabout it's 30 miles and take an hour, yeah. the second exit. There are other roads in Morden that look very similar to this, or maybe even a bit faster, wider, less parked cars, that are 20 miles an hour. So we really need to be looking out for the speed limits around Morden. After yeah. 100 yards, turn right. Okay, mirror, signal. Position. Turn right. Speed. Also thinking about gears if we're not in Scott's fancy space space machine. Everyone's calling it a space spaceship. spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> Such a sick car. I think you started that. Actually. Did I? Yeah. Such a sick car. Someone else there before as well. Okay, so I'm just checking out that sat nav there, keeping up to date with where I'm going next. Sharp Always. left. Sharp left. See that clue there? That's really useful. I'm going to slow down even more because she's told me. It's a sharp bend. What advice would you give a student on how to decide whether it's After safe to proceed yards, and keep going the in the situation? And take the second well, in this exit. situation, we've got the least priority because the hazards are on our side, so we should be giving way. If someone flashes you, don't take that as they're giving way to you because that's not the actual meaning of a flash. The way to decipher it, I guess, would just be looking at their body language, the body language of the car. If they're slowing down and moving across for you, then that's a clear indication that Lovely. they're helping you out there. Loads of meeting situations on this road. And I'm being cautious. That car, do you see that car there, right there? Sped up and move to the middle. I'm moving straight to the left and I'm letting them go because we do not want to get stuck. A meeting situation is quite an easy way to fail your driving test. Manual cars are a lot of fun. I do so enjoy good. driving them, the but I the road, don't enjoy right. driving them in traffic. Yeah, because you're first gear, second gear, first gear, second gear. Your left foot gets tired and that. But, oh, yeah, I, I completely agree. The thing about this car as well, which I've noticed, is it's way over revving. I would change gear a lot earlier. You can hear the Turn engine really right. oh, sorry. giving it beans. I've just put you into a sportier mode. Did you? That's, oh, so that's why. Yeah, I'll okay. put you into We're in sport eco. mode. That would change you at 1,500. Uh, okay, right, right, which right. Which is probably where you'd normally shift, right? Look at that. What's that? Oh, that's to help you see the traffic lights. 
because I can't just look out the window. Well, don't know. Can you? Can you see them? Yeah, sometimes. 100%. Sometimes you can't. Okay. Yeah. It just depends on the lights. Mercedes thought of everything. They're very clever. Very Obviously. clever. Now I'm going to be putting out a video, uh, Mercedes Vs Land Rover. Yeah. And I'm not going to spoil it, but one of them just annihilates the other one. What speed wise? No, technology wise. Okay. Yeah. Um, and for the price difference, it's one of them's half the price than the other. Well, I know Land Rovers are really expensive, really expensive. So I'd expect the, the Land Rover to have much more technology. If you're saying it doesn't, then it must just be the extra metal that you're Spoiler going alert, for. yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have to wait and see. I'm going to watch that one. Yeah. yeah. After yeah. 300 yeah. yards, turn left, then at the end of the road, turn right. Okay, so this bit's a little bit tricky as well. If you're looking at the sat nav, it'll tell you where to go. Take this corner really slowly. Turn Especially left as you're then coming off at the end of the road. 40 mile an hour right. road. Luckily for me, the lights are red, so we're going to be approaching this corner slowly anyway. The junctions seem to light, Francis. Yeah, I'm getting actually. I'm actually getting really lucky. I'm looking over at my test report. Is there anything written there? Anything? One mark. One mark. Okay. <laughs> that you completed the reverse park. Brilliant. Actually, we've got to do another mark now. But I do need to ask you the show me question. A more appropriate show me question. Go on. Show me, when it's safe, how you turn on your dipped beam headlights, please. Interesting. Don't know how to do it on this car, but I'm guessing if I do that... Perfect. Looks like, yeah? Lovely. Cool. And um, although this would be more for the dip beam main beams, how do you know that the dip beams are on from inside the car? So dip beam gives you a, a green warning light, main beam gives you a blue warning light, yeah? Fantastic. This is a tricky turn. And then we're going straight away to the right. Keeping to the turn right as well, right. spotting then, that blue circle. At the end of the road, Remember, blue turn circles left. give you instructions that you have to do, turn so you left. have to keep to the right. If you disobey that and try and go into the coach parking bay, you're gonna fail your driving test. All right, so this road, speed, 30 miles an hour. It's quite narrow though, so look, I'm doing 23 miles an hour right now. I'm speeding up when I've got more room, but as I get squeezed and I have less space, slowing right down again. Look at that, 21 miles an hour just past these park cars we're going to go back up not to 30 that would be reckless one thing that is very worthwhile After 300 yards is across the roundabout when you're watching this the video exit, then take the second left watch how francis and i move our heads so much and our eyes if our heads aren't moving our eyes are moving it's just a like a sort of continuous thing we probably across don't even notice that you're doing it the second you? exit then Take the second left. Really good idea to move your head as well, because if your head's not moving, how does the examiner know where you're looking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it is a little bit acting. You could just look with your eyes. Uh, 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 uh. Can you see my eyes moving? No. No, okay. So you need to let the examiner know that you're using your mirrors and you're mm -hmm. using them properly. How do, you, how do you do that? I'd say it's like watching a tennis game. <laughs> After 100 yards, turn left. All right, so turning left up ahead. I'm coming up to the end of my driving test now. I can Turn feel it. Left. I know Morden. I know the area. If you've been practicing here, you'll know the area too. And you'll know, wow, this looks like the road that takes me up to the driving test centre. All right. And you're going to start thinking about, I'm relaxing. at the end of my driving test. You're going to start relaxing. What would you say to people on that one? It's not over until you switch the engine off. Right, that's it. Exactly. I've been watching too many of his videos. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the road, Turn right. All right, taking this nice and slow because it's a really narrow road. Really narrow. And it's residential. Anything could happen here. A car could, doors could open. Mm -hmm. Someone could Turn pop right. out of their house. Kids that are all home from school. Okay, Francis, across. top Go on. quiz. Go on. How do you help somebody judge the distance from parked cars on the left? Ah, okay, I usually set up a reference point. On my okay. car, there's a light sensor button. Yep. How do you do it on this car? I also use the reference point as well. Yeah. But it doesn't work for everybody. Okay. So then what do you do? After 80 yards, turn left. I find that if you actually just open up your vision and look, so if we're looking yeah. at that parked car, so hard to, mm -hmm. to get at first, but as soon as you take your vision off what's ahead and look turn at left. the hazard, you can then see how close you are. Mind-blowing when people realise, oh, I'm just not looking at the hazards. I could have just looked at it, yeah. Yeah, in order to do that, uh, slow down. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So here, if I'm not sure how close I am to this blue car, mm -hmm. slow down. Instead of just looking ahead, mm -hmm. look at the car, look mm -hmm. at the edge of my car mm -hmm. and the edge of their car, and just get them lined up. Make sure I'm far enough, about a metre, away yes. from it. Mm -hmm. 
Here we go. Here's the crossroads. The last After crossroads before yards, you finish your left, driving test. Then mm -hmm. turn around when possible. Okay, we're not going to turn around when possible. Once we get to the driving test centre, should I turn this off now? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so once we get to the driving test centre, we're going to pull over and I'm going to hear whether I've passed or failed my driving test. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this lady's waiting for me. I'm approaching slowly. She could have nipped into that gap there. Because I was going slowly, I would have been ready for it. I'm not trying to rush. I'm anticipating everyone else's next move. Come on, I'm really there. Did you make eye contact with her? I did, actually. Yeah. yeah, she was looking right at me, and I was looking at her, and I was going really slowly. If she'd have progressed there, I would have been ready to stop. And that helps, doesn't it, really, yeah. to see what the other person's looking like, and you can kind of make an assessment of what they're going to do next. Okay, checking my right mirror. Why am I checking my right mirror? Because we were in two lanes, which are merging down into one lane. Should I pull over on the left here? Yeah? That's the Yeah, we're good to park here, yeah? yeah? All right. There is a signal into the parking bay between 10 and 4 p.m. What's the time now? Time to get a watch. All right, cool. No comment on the watch. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what I'm going to say. All right, okay. Uh, so, Francis. How did I do? That's the end of your uh, driving test. You. How do you feel that went? I feel like it went quite well. The commentary yeah. really helped. Yeah. If you're on your driving test, you probably do a commentary as well, even if you just do it in your head, so you're always aware of what's happening next, and you're thinking ahead. As soon as you stop thinking, you start getting nervous. You think about the fact that you're on a driving test, and you get yeah. the nerves kicking Overthinking. in. Overthinking. Yeah, don't yeah. overthink. Just keep going with the commentary. Mm -hmm. What's next, and what am I going to do about it? Yeah. Some people feel really comfortable with that, don't they? Doing self-commentary. Some yeah. of the students, yeah, and yeah. I try to encourage people to do that. If, if you feel comfortable doing self-commentary, yeah. do it. Okay, if your driving instructor's in the back on your test and you're doing self-commentary, they're probably going to have a right good time in the back there laughing their hands up. No, I'm just joking. Uh, right, Francis, give me a moment to go over my marks. And um, I'd like to say congratulations. But? You, you have... <laughs> you have You'd like to, but? You have passed your oh, driving brilliant. test. Uh, but you did get one minor. Did I? Okay. Can you guess what it was? No. No? <laughs> I'll give you a clue. Just now. Just now? Actually, as you pulled over and stopped. Um, didn't was... feel it? No. You didn't feel it? Didn't feel what? Your brake? No. No. Just skim the curb. Did I? And if you don't believe me, yeah. and people probably won't believe me, yeah. what we'll do is we'll grab a camera. Okay. We'll come out and just have a look at the front Let's tire. do it. What do you have to say about your parking? Well, it looks like I'm that close. <laughs> Big shout out to Scott. Thank you so much for the for the mock test. Obviously, I know now my skills are up to scratch. Follow me on Instagram at Francis the Instructor. Follow my YouTube channel at The Driving School. Links down below. Links down below. 